My remarkably uh, capable assistant, Lindsay Bird, took these seven or eight or nine hours of tapes and transcribed the whole thing. And then I set to work editing uh, this conversation. I spent about, I suppose, uh, two months on this. And while I was working on this, uh, thinking about the things that Paul and I had talked about, his childhood in Boston, his love of nature, um, his discovery of classical music, he's a superbly trained uh, pianist, um, his discovery of photography, and also his immersion in the philosophy of the mystic Gurdjieff. And all this I tried to synthesize and incorporate into the story. And while I was working on the manuscript, I was also working on the picture selection. As you can see, this is my methodology. I make laser prints, put them on the living room floor, under the watchful eye of the Statue of Liberty, <laughs> and then study them as I'm writing. And I have to say that when it comes to selecting photographs for a book, it's too important a job to leave to analysis. It has to be the product of a very deep feeling and understanding to the photographs themselves. And of course, uh, you have to be mindful of what the story is telling you. Having done the manuscript and the picture selection, it's time to go into the workshop. And this is a, a little view of Lumiere Press. At this juncture, I want to segue into a little film because I want to actually show you the way books are made in the shop. And there's a couple of reasons for this. And one of them is I don't think you can separate the sensibility of the book from the craftsmanship. There's an idea I particularly like. It's been promulgated in the sphere of printmaking. That is of the syntax of the print. And the notion goes that if you have a picture, it's going to have a different essence in each medium. So if this picture is uh, produced as a wood engraving, or an etching, or a lithograph, substantially it's going to be different. And I believe the same is true of books. I can tell you that the book is uh, cast in lead and letterpress printed, but it's going to be uh, some, in some way definitively different from a book done in an inkjet printer or something done in a commercial industrial shop. So that's why I think uh, the little film will be worthwhile. Also, um, if I start showing slides and talk about every little detail of how we make the books, we'll be here forever. The film is, has finite duration. This is just to set up one little technical aspect of the making of the books. In my hands, I'm holding a couple little brass matrices, mats. And these are little slugs, you can see they're about three quarters of an inch high, that are engraved with characters. And you'll see in a moment how this is employed. So, let's see. No, it's fine. I'm going to try to do it from here. Um, all right, so far, there we go, all right, I'll try to narrate what's going on here. This is the airtight machine. This is a machine that was invented around 1886. I hope that little uh, controller in the bottom disappears. And the mats that I just showed you, as I key them, they drop down out of the magazine into an assembler where I can make one line of type at a time. The uh, line of mats is uh, sent over to the mold. The cams are turning, and this is a crucible holding 40 pounds of the lead at 550 degree, 525 degrees which is now injected into the mold up against those matrices and it makes a fresh line of lead type. 
So this is the basis of all the typesetting in the book. Of course, this movie is very abbreviated um, because there's material preparation. And to get to the point of actually putting the type on the press to print a book, we've already gone through an exorbitant amount of proofing, correcting, refining. But, you know, for the sake of this little film, which was made for an installation at the Howard Greenberg Gallery a year or so ago, We've, we've hit the, uh, the highlights. I'm blocking everybody here, right? You can see this on my website if you don't see it right now. It's funny, when we were making this movie, we seemed to spend an exceptional amount of time on this business and my inking up the press. But it actually, strangely enough, is one of the key parts because this press does not have some kind of ink fountain to regulate the uniformity of the inking on the sheets. When I printed uh, the Cap Negro book, I had to print over 8,000 sheets and I had to monitor and ink them individually. So this gives you a little bit of an insight into the demands of the task. And so for every sheet, I hand feed it, I hand deliver it. And of course, when this is all done, then I spend uh, a week or two uh, collating and folding everything and preparing it for the binding. So I probably spent from the day I got back from visiting Paul Capenegro in Maine to actually having a book lunch, about a year elapsed. One day I was uh, in the shop with one of my assistants and I said, you know, I love this environment so much, this little space we've created here. I said, you know, wouldn't it be fabulous if we actually hung up some art to decorate the shop? And she said, are you kidding? I said, what do you mean? She said, look around, the place is full of industrial sculpture. And she was absolutely right. And this is probably the most gorgeous specimen in the entire shop, the sewing machine. And this actually arrived in the shop on my 40th birthday. It was a birthday present from my mother. And I think this is the zenith of maternal instinct because, you know, sometimes a guy needs like a Preston Sturgis DVD or some bath towels, but sometimes he really needs a 1926 Bremer sewing machine. So you're seeing this in real time. And I've got to say, if you sit at a machine like this, hour after hour, day after day, you become very philosophical. <laughs> I forgot how long this part was. <laughs> And then I, I usually sew up like 30 books at a time, deliver them off the back of the machine, and then cut them apart into individual, individual books. These are then glued up on the spine, trimmed, and they're ready to be put into the case, which I'm now manufacturing here. Whenever I do a book, if it happens that it sells out quickly in a matter of a couple of weeks or something, there's always somebody who comes along and says, why didn't you make more of these? <laughs> and there's an expression, I, what is it, economy of, I, I, something they use in commercial industrial terms, the idea if you make more, it's cheaper and easier to make. This is not true at the Nair Press. Every book takes exactly the same amount of effort. And again, on my website, there's a little uh, video of us making these cases, and it gives you a real flavor of what's required to get to the finish line on this. <laughs> 